This is part five in our series of lectures on other forms of induction. In this lecture, we're going to do our third example of a proof using the principle of complete induction. And this is the one we're going to do. We define a sequence x sub n of real numbers inductively by putting x sub 1 to be 2, x sub 2 to be minus 26, and for all n bigger than or equal to 3, we define x sub n by this equation here. So the idea is that, for example, if you replace n by 3, this tells you that x sub 3 is equal to 7x2 minus 10x1, and using these two values, we can calculate x sub 3. Then if you replace n by 4, you get x4 is 7x3 minus 10x2, and since you know x3 and x2, you can then get x4, and continuing in that way, you can generate as many of the x sub n's as you wish. It's a simple exercise using principle of complete induction to show that these things here define x sub n for all natural numbers n. But that's not the exercise that we're going to do here. Instead what we're going to do is we're going to prove that for all natural numbers x, x sub n is given in closed form by this formula here. In other words, in order to figure out what x sub 20 is, if you use this one here, you would have to generate all of x1 up to x sub 19 first. So that's a lot of calculation. And you could then figure out what x sub 20 was. But this formula is telling you that if you just replace n by 20, you immediately get x sub 20. So it's, it's quite a nice formula. So I want you to use the principle of complete induction to prove that this is the case. And so put your video on pause and see if you can at least write down the first couple of sentences of the proof. So here's how I begin the proof. I say, I introduce what is the appropriate set n. And you'll notice there are two things going on here. There's this thing here and there's this thing here. This is the one you already know to be the case. This is the one you want to prove. So this is the one you should write for your set S. S is the set of all n such that the thing you're trying to prove is true. We're going to use the principle of complete induction to show that S is equal to all of n. I sometimes find that students write this as their set S, and I always wonder why they do that. This is something you already know. This is the formal definition of x sub n. The thing that you put in set s is the thing that you want to try to prove. Okay, now put your video on pause again and see if you can write down the basis step and its proof. Here's my proof of the basis step. As we've seen before, x1 and x2 were defined differently from the subsequent terms. So proving that 1 and 2 lie in S belong in the basis step. And so uh, we have to verify that x sub 1, which we know to be 2, is what you get if you plug 1 in for n here. And you have to prove that x2, which is minus 26, is what you get if you replace n by 2. And so that's what I've done. I've just verified that this comes out to be 2, in case n is 1, and this comes out to be minus 26, in case n is 2. Okay, so that verifies the basis step. Now put your video on pause again, and see if you can write down the proof of the inductive step. I've written this at the top of the page because we've gone to a new page, uh, I want you to recall what are, what are the things we have so far got. This is the formal definition of the x sub n's. This is what it is we want to prove. We want to prove for all natural numbers n that this is the case. And we've defined s to be this set here. So here's my proof of the inductive step. I begin by giving myself a natural number. I assume that n is at least 3 because 
Three is the smallest natural number, which I haven't as yet shown lies in my set S, and I assume that all of the predecessors of n lie in S. We have to show that n is also an element of S. Now, since n is at least 3, we know that both of these numbers are in S because they're both natural numbers and they're predecessors of n. So what is it? What is my task now? Well, my task is to prove that this happens. So I'm not going to write that down. I'm going to pick one of the two sides, and I'm going to prove that it's equal to the other side. So I'm going to start with this one here. I write it down, and then I begin by writing what I know to be true about it. I know that x sub n is equal to this. That's the formal definition of x sub n. And now, since n minus 1 lies in s, that means I know that this formula holds if I replace n by n minus 1. So that's so x sub n minus 1 is equal to this. It's what I get by replacing n by n minus 1 here. Minus 10 times this. That's what I get if I replace n by, by n minus 2 in here. And now it's just simply a matter of verifying that it gives me what I want. Um, so I multiply out. I get 42 times 2 to the n minus 1. 2 to the n minus 1 I can take the 2 to the minus 1 and write it as a half. A half into 42 is 21. So that term is 21 times 2 to the n. Here I'm bringing down 5 to the minus 1 is 1 fifth. So that's 7 times 2 is 14 divided by 5 times 5 to the n. And what about this one here? I'm going to bring down this 2 to the minus 2. That's 4. Um, I've got 60 divided by 4, which is 15, times 2 to the n. And here I've got plus 20 divided by 5 to the 2. That's divided by 25. That's the same as 4 fifths times 5 to the n. If you group the 2 to the n terms together, you see 21 minus 15 is 6 times 2 to the n. Minus 14 fifths plus 4 fifths is minus 10 fifths, which is minus 2. So I get this. And that's exactly what I wanted to see. I've proven that xn is equal to this, and that proves that n lies in this set. So now I have the right to say that by the principle of complete induction, it follows that s is equal to all the natural numbers.